Uh, for example, one of the most important things for people in a relationship in terms of their mental health is how intimate they are with each other. Mm -hmm. And that includes everything, including sex, but obviously the conversations that they have with each other, yeah. the honesty of the, those conversations, the frankness and, and the lovingness and mm -hmm. the touching and the hugging, all that stuff mm -hmm. goes together in the intimacy. Yeah. And to be honest, in therapy, when people, uh, and also in conversations, when other guys have come talk, talking to me, they've asked me one question. But Peter, how do I compete with the phone? When my wife is in the phone, I don't exist. And I, yeah. I can't seduce my wife. I can't become more important, more interesting. It's just, <laughs> it's almost impossible to be more interesting than the phone. Than the her. soundtracks and the, uh, yes. <laughs> everything that's built into it. And the notifications. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that this is only a, a, a woman problem. It's also yeah. a guy's problem. Yeah. Because we are really good at focusing on one thing and not being able to hear anything that happens around us. Mm -hmm. So I have been with, I have been with the phone sometimes and you have said, uh, I've told you this thing, this thing three times. You know what I said? And I said no, I have no. no idea. I have no idea because I was so focused on that. So uh -huh. it's not only a woman problem, but does that mean we have a problem? Uh, yes, and, it does. And this is the, this is we, the idea. We, we do. This is the idea of addiction. You know. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Can it become an addiction? And. Yeah. You know, let's have a look at, I've got some of the stats here on how much people are using okay, phones good. because that's it good. is a huge part of our modern life. Brilliant. Yep. Um, so 70% of adults use social media. Uh, so we're talking about social media specifically. Up to 95% of teens, which is pretty much Whoa. everyone. 40% mm. of kids aged 8 to 12. Uh, so this is sort of looking globally on average. This is just social media. This, this is, is one, just one, small one aspect, aspect of yeah. it. Yeah. On average, adults are using social media two to two and a half hours a day. So I think that's very little. I think people are using that more. This is yeah. an average. There okay. are people more, there are people less, obviously. Yeah. But think about that. Two hours a day, seven days a week. That's 14 that's hours. Yeah. That's like two work days. I and mean, everyone's stressed with so much work to do and not enough mm. time, but that's two, almost two full working days a lot, yeah. on social media. Um, on average, we have 7.1 different social media accounts. It used to be just one. And That's then now true. it's the average is seven, seven yeah. different ones. Um, when you look at high school students, the average is 3.5 hours a day. If you were using any other thing that, yeah. that often, um, we would typically class it as an addiction. And uh, so let's look at some of those signs. Feeling like you need to use it regularly, like daily. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Um, spending a lot of time on it or thinking about it. Mm. Feeling an urge to use it more and more. Yeah. That absolutely, we see that Which social media. Which is artificially created, yes, by the way. Yes, they, they have teams of psychologists mm -hmm. making these applications more addictive mm -hmm. for the kids and for grown-ups. Yeah. This, this is so unethical. <laughs> you know. But they have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. Continue. Withdrawing from others and isolating yourself. And I think that's a really interesting one because... It's called social media and you could argue that, well, it actually brings me in contact with people, mm. you know, people overseas that I wouldn't otherwise be in touch with. You know, it, it does allow me to speak with my friends from school. And at the same time, what we're seeing is that they're very shallow connections. It's well, not allowing the for the birthday deeper. Party? Look at this birthday party yes. last weekend. Yes. You know, I mean, what did you notice? Well, at, at the birthday party. So here's the thing. When we go to a birthday, a kid's birthday party or an event like that, I'm always thinking, yes, mm. excellent. Here's an opportunity for him not to be on devices. Yeah. Here's an opportunity to be out and running and playing. And to be like fair, they, yeah, I mean, that's good. To be fair, they did do that. So it was at a jumping place. They were jumping on trampolines and having a great time. Mm. As soon as that segment finished and it was time for everyone to come and eat, I would say half of, there are probably about 12 mostly boys in the group, half of them pulled out their phones and sat down. And it was shocking to me as a parent, and, and I know a few other parents were looking at this, you know, quite surprised. It was just mm. a strange thing to see. By the way, just doing, so, the, so the audience yeah, knows, they yeah. were nine years old. Yeah. We're not talking about teenagers. No. And half of them yeah. had their own phone yeah. at the birthday party, which yeah. they took out. 
And the moment that they took out their phone, they disconnected from everybody else. Well, what I noticed was then others, some but not all, came and sort of flocked around and stood mm. together. So in my head, I'm thinking, well, oh, at least they're looking at it together. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm. But it was, you know. It was just an odd thing, and I'm but not sure exactly while, how I felt about at, it. At least for a while, the yeah. running and the playing stopped. Yeah. And yeah. this is the problem, because mm. kids that age are supposed to be running, are supposed to be climbing trees, are supposed to be breaking bones. So they're supposed to be doing stuff. They're but supposed but to be the using the eye contact. The energy. If they're sitting down together and eating a meal, just the eye contact and the, mm. you know, it's a different experience. Absolutely. So, so there is that kind of element of your attention is directed here, not to the human beings that are physically present in the room. Yeah. Um, That's a good point. So the impact that it has on those social skills, you know. Look at me, not look at the device. Uh -huh. That's what it should be. Uh -huh. Look at me, not the yeah. device. Yeah. Uh, not meeting other obligations because of it, losing interest in other activities. Um, we've seen this too. Uh, there was a period of time where we saw, and again, speaking about our son, where we saw him stop eating. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not hungry anymore. You've had the two bites. Mm. You've got to be hungry. This is not normal mm. for you. You know, I'm not eating because he's desperate to get back to whatever game he's playing or mm. uh, that sort of thing. And so... Because the rule is, while he's eating, there's no device. Right. <laughs> so, so he can't wait to stop eating yeah. in order to look at the device, uh -huh. <laughs> which is a problem. So these mm. are all signs of addiction. If it was any other drug, we'd say there's a problem here. Mm. Um, you know, restless or troubled if you stop using it or you're not allowed to use it. Absolutely. Mm. Um, trying to cut down without success, having withdrawal when you try to stop. These are all things we're seeing for this. So uh, like it or not, there's definitely a huge potential for addiction here. Mm. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.